Hello YouTube, it's Mark from Spending Wages here and today I'm going to be unboxing the iPhone 5. So let's get on with it. The story behind this, I booked the day off work and set my alarm for 5am, headed down to my local O2 store, I got there about quarter to six and was sixth in the queue. Sad I know, but I'm an Apple sheep, so it had to be this way. To get to the O2 store, you have to walk past the Apple store. And at quarter to six yesterday morning, there was close to probably 300 people there, stood in the dark, in the rain, with a couple of tents knocking around. And I was really worried that the O2 queue was gonna be something similar, but it wasn't. In total, from first queuing to eventually walking out of the O2 store with the iPhone 5, it took a little over two hours. I think this is reasonable, especially when you heard stories of people queuing for a week outside the various Apple stores around the world. Anyway, enough of that story. Here's a look at the inside of the manual where you can see the SIM card key and now the paperwork that comes with the manual. Onto the new headphones or ear pods as Apple calls them now, the power plug and the last thing to remove from the box is the new USB lead. Here it is and there you will see the new lightning connector. This replaces the old 30 pin connector and there is now no right or wrong way to plug it into the iPhone as it is reversible. Apple are planning to sell an adapter for this connector, but as more and more things are operating wirelessly, it may be best for your next sound dock to be wireless. Moving back to the earpods, I will now take you through a few different views of the earpods so you can see how they have been completely redesigned from the original headphones. Now onto the phone itself. According to Apple, when you compare the iPhone 5 to the iPhone 4S, it is 18% thinner, 20% lighter, and has 12% less volume. Two things that I picked up on straight away was how light the phone is, and also the extra height. Because there are now six lines of applications, whereas the 4S only has five. Here you can see a close-up of the new lightning connector and also the new location of the headphone port. All there now is at the top of the phone is a power button. Here's a look at the volume buttons and also the silent switch. These have not changed. And the other side of the phone is where you insert the SIM card. Moving on to the camera, this is now an eight megapixel camera and one of the features it has is something called Panorama. Here's a look at the note on the reverse of the phone designed by Apple in California, assembled in China. I think the black and slate color works well. The alternative color is white and silver. Improvements have also been made to the battery. Talk time now stands at eight hours on 3G and standby time is up to 225 hours. Now I'm going to give you a look at the new Nano SIM card. Open the booklet up and this is what you see. Hello and introducing the Nano SIM on the right. Inside are a couple of adapters and also the Nano SIM itself. Here's a quick size comparison with one of the Queen's English and as you can see this SIM card is really quite small. And finally before I leave you I'm going to compare the new iPhone 5 with the iPhone 4S. Here's a look at the base of each phone and as you can see the base of the iPhone 5 is considerably different. And now a look at the back of each phone. On the iPhone 5 you will see the slate strip and also a matching aluminium band. Here's a look at the top of each phone. The headphone port has now moved and that the iPhone 5 is not as deep as the iPhone 4S coming in at only 7.6 millimeters. This final view gives another look at the increased height of the iPhone 5. The last thing to compare is the micro and nano SIM. So here you go. So that's about all I've got to say for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.